Hello everyone, this is David Godibaze from IT Solutions Network. This is gonna be a review of the dashboard with the updated network application 9.4. I have Cloud Gateway Ultra here with the Unify OS server. Current version of the network application on this gear is 9.3.45. So I'm going to upgrade it. Let's go into the control plane and here's the update. Now, as you can see, current update here is 9.4.19. This is the latest update from the Ubiquiti and this is actual official release now. So I'm gonna click it and proceed with the update. You have official channel, release candidate and early access. Network application 9.4 has been installed. And as you can see, the current version of the network application is 9.4.19. This is the latest version as of today on September 2nd. I have Unify version 4.4 and this is my default IP address of the gear. This is my public IP and here I have the WAN option. On the new version, we have the options to filter the data for the WAN. If you have multiple connections of WAN, you'll see all of them here. And you can filter based on the download or upload and based on the quality of the connection. And of course, how much data you want to see at once. One hour, day, week or months. Now here I have a little bit of information about the ISP. We have the ISP name, public IP, but this public IP is the one that is assigned to my gear. It's not coming from show my IP servers. It's not real IP. Meaning if this IP is translated into something in the middle of between my gear and the internet, this still will show the IP that is assigned to the Ultra, not to the the ISP is giving me. Okay. And this is not wearable IP. I just have it so for the lab. Here we have the mostly data usage because this is a fresh new factor reset the device. We don't have much data here. And we have current throughput of the download and upload, okay? Now, here we have the Cloudflare, Google, and Microsoft. And this part of the dashboard shows how many milliseconds of delay we have towards this vendor. Now, let's go into topology. And here in the topology, it will show what devices we have connected to the Ultra Gateway in our case. On the left side, you can see that there are many, many options to filter what do you want to see on the topology. You can see only online devices, or pending adoptions, or you can even zoom in or zoom out and filter based on the wireless channels and the Wi-Fi speed, wired, everything pretty much, right? And don't forget, every icon here that is unified device is clickable and goes to that device settings by just clicking on it. You can see all the settings of this router. Now let's go into unified devices. And here we have the switch ready to be adopted. I'm going to adopt this. And again, here we have the new filtering on the early versions. We didn't have this one. So now we have a filter to show only online devices, only switches or gateways, only ultra gateways or ultra switches. And how much was the uptime? Let's say I want to see all the devices that has been up for a month, right? This is what we do. Or when was this, this installed? Was it installed? 30 days, at least three days, at least a month, and things like that. Now, this is already updated and adopted, right? So let me connect the access point right now. Hold on a sec. So I plugged my AP and now it's ready to be adopted. I'm gonna click to adopt. And now we have more options here on the filtering, how we want to filter the view of the dashboard. Of course, on each dashboard view, you have customized columns and you can remove or add any new columns in this specific page. And on the client page, of course you have the same filtering capabilities. You can filter based on the VLAN, based on the wired or wireless, based on the fast ethernet or gigabit fast ethernet, based on the days, how many days it's been online. And you can also switch to the DHCP and to see what devices got what IPs from the DHCP server. You can actually even export this list of the DHCP list from the network or add the fixed IP client saying that, you know what, if this MAC address comes into the network, assign this name and assign this IP, this is going to be statically assigned IP using the DHP server. Not manually configured IP on the device, but it's still fixed IP because DHP server will always give that IP to that client. Now let's go into the port settings. On the port settings, just like on any of the new page, we have options to filter based on different credentials, based on the status of in use, available, critical, warning, and things like that. 
everything. And of course, customized columns is still here, just like on any other page. Here we have all ports, or we can choose switch ports only, or router ports only. We can see this as we had before on the old versions. We can see statistics here, or we can just see the port diagram. Okay. Now from here, you can click any of the port and configure the port. For example, if I click this port, I can choose which VLAN I want this port to be and do I want it to be trunk or not. In the next videos, I'm, I'm going to explain each of these configuration, each of these dashboards specifically to master every piece of configuration. This video is only for review, just to review what's going on on the new version. Now here we have the radio information. We have the options to switch to the radio, to the environment, and you will see all the wireless connections once you enable and start broadcasting the wireless networks. And of course, just like on the other page, you can filter based on the uptime or based on the radio channels. Now, insights show much more information than on older version of the unified network application. Here we have the threads, block, and you can filter based on anything, pretty much source, destination, IP, MAC, port, zone, anything, even on the policy or interface, right? That's pretty cool, actually. And then you have the activity that you can see, you know, show me only downloaded files, downloaded information for a week, from the clients or from the application and then choose see or not stats and you can also filter based on the risk low suspicious or concerning risks now let's go into settings and see what's going on here we have much more information within one page we have all this information that we had before okay and now we have this new policy engine and let's see what's going on here now this is not zone-based firewall yet because I didn't upgrade. So let me click on this and we are going to upgrade to the zone-based firewall. Now this upgrade is free. It's just enabling zone-based firewall in your router. If it's not enabled yet, you want to enable it and configure it because it's pretty cool actually. It, it, it eliminates a bunch of access rules that you don't want to have. Now I'm gonna go from top to bottom to create the Wi-Fi network internet connections and the VPN so that we can use that in the firewall settings. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna create the new wireless. That's gonna be YouTube Lab Wireless SSID. And the password is gonna be something that I won't remember because I don't care. Add new Wi-Fi. Okay. Now let's do the IoT network for YouTube Lab. Again, I'm not remembering the password because I don't care. And you know what? Let's make it for YouTube 2.4 gigahertz, okay? And I'm gonna switch to manual and I'll disable the 5G and that's it, okay? Because all my IoT devices are supposed to work on 2.4 gigahertz. That's how I want. This is not about configuring the entire device. This is just a dashboard review, so I'm not gonna add much of the configuration, just a little bit of configuration here and there so that we can see how it is recognized or worked in the firewall settings, in the firewall policies. Now on the networks, let's real quickly create a user network. That's gonna be default, all default. And then there's gonna be IoT network, again, default. And the printer network, for example, printer, also default. Now on the internet, let me plug the second cable and I'm gonna say, you know what? Unify Cloud Gateway Ultra, you are gonna be a secondary WAN interface. I went ahead and connected the cables to the Cloud Gateway Ultra. I have the primary ISP here and then I have secondary ISP. What's new here is that you have the options to configure the IPSLA meaning you can be very granular how you want to recognize if the ISP1 went down. For example, you can say that, you know, if the traffic dropped for five times within one minute, only after that consider that ISP1 went down and only after that switch to the ISP2. Now, both interfaces are configured. Now, if you go into dashboard on the first place, now you can see I have two WAN connections here, WAN1 and WAN2. Okay, now let's go back to the settings again and go into the VPN. Now on the VPN, you still have the VPN server, VPN client. Now VPN server is so that Unify is the server and anything else connects to the Unify. 
The client is that a Unify will act as a client and connect to the cloud VPNs, for example, or any other VPN, your main office, for example. You can, you can have the Unify to be VPN client behind the NAT and connect to the HQ, even though there's a NAT in between on the, on the client side, not on the server side. And you can have the side side VPN. Everything this is how it was before, nothing new here. On the cybersecurity, you have the options to block the regions, encrypt DNS, honeypot, and everything is pretty much the same as it was before. On the content, content filtering, it's the same. Traffic logging is pretty much the same. Here's the new one. This is very new. This is on 9.4, nothing else. So on the policy table, on the, on the older version, or let's say on 9.3, you didn't have this look. It was all separated into a specific tabs on into a their tabs on the top of the screen, right? You you could have the NAT, VPN separately, but now VPN is here on the left side, and everything else is gathered together, including routing, policy-based routing, port forwarding, NAT, DNS, access rules, and everything else. And on the left side, you have the ability to filter what do you want to see on the main screen. For example, do you want to see the NAT only or firewall settings only? You can do that. On the zones, you have the same zones as you had before. You can still create a zone, assign network, or do any of the zone-based firewall configuration. Nothing new on this part. And here's the very, very new that a lot of people like, and I don't like it so much. And I'll explain why. This is what Ubiquiti calls object-oriented network. The object, you know, it was the something that had the IP in the profiles, for example, there was an object here, but now it's a network list. With any other vendor on a Cisco, Juniper, Palo Alto, object is the container of the IP address. Not with Ubiquiti. <laughs> not, at least not with Ubiquiti's Unify 9.4 as of today on September 2nd. The object here is, um, think about this as the one big container that includes every information you need from the perspective of the security, route, and QoS. There's no not in it, but everything else pretty much here. Let's say I want to block the internet access to the IoT. Now, back in the days, I keep saying back in the days, it was a month ago, even a week ago. On the older version, like 9.3, you would come here and you would create a policy saying that, you know, if the traffic is coming from the network, that is IoT, and goes to the internet, block it, okay? And that would be it. Internet is blocked. You could also name something and internet will be blocked. Now, you have the other options to do the same from one page. Even though this is still one page, what I did, Ubiquiti thought that the object-oriented networking would be a good thing. And I can see how this is good for someone, but not for me. And let me explain. First of all, here you can create the groups. Groups can be MAC addresses or, or the networks, for example. You can still create the groups. And before, we would do the profiles and the object list. Now it's a network list, but you can still create that and use it on the firewall. But so let's create something that, you know, let's say we want to block the internet for the IoT and then route if, if that IoT goes to the IP address of, I don't know, the something on the internet. You know, you know what? Let's block list applications. On, I don't know, this application, okay? And then if if the traffic goes to 5.5.5.5, let's use the WAN2, you will have the VPN tunnels here as well. And then you can QoS and do something, right? And then edit, test, and add. And that's it. Easy, right? But this stays here. Even though this action create the background policies in the zone or QoS, this is still stays here, and every time you want to change that, you come here and click on it. If you go into zones, this new rule is here, this test rule. But here's, here's the thing, you cannot change that. From here, at least, you cannot change that. You can click on it, see what's going on, but you cannot change it from here. You can go into policy table 
and you can still see this but again you cannot change it from here you can you know expand and then see what's going on but it's just to see every time you want to change that you come here on the object oriented networking and this is the reason why i don't like it and it doesn't include everything as on the corporate networking for example on the checkpoint when you create the policy we can include NAT. Here, there is no NAT. I understand QoS is here, route is here. Where's the NAT? It's not here. I mean, if I choose the option to go through the second interface or through the VPN, most likely I will need to configure the NAT for it separately because it's not included here, right? I hope Ubiquiti will add the NAT configuration here as well and makes it possible to change the end configuration that was created by the object-oriented networking in the other settings like zone-based firewall or the policy table. This is pretty much what's new on the network application 9.4. And of course, here you have the dynamic routing. Before we had only OSPF, now we have BGP as well. On the profiles, we have one SLA. This is the new thing. Remember I told you that on the internet connections, you have the flexibility to choose how do we want to recognize as internet being down. So IPSLA, policy table, and object-oriented networking is pretty much new thing on the 9.4. Now on the control plane, you had pretty much everything is the same. Okay, this was very quick. A little bit of unorganized but i hope you still liked it i hope it still delivered some kind of value i'm gonna be recording the other videos for 9.4 as to how to configure the policies or how to do the dynamic routing or mastering the configuration separately the nat a firewall dns and things like that so if you want to see those videos too subscribe to my channel and click the ring bell so that you will not fight when the new video is uploaded thanks for watching have a wonderful day or night <laughs> i don't know if it's night or not at your location anyway take care guys